Okay, this here is the web train. Let me get that in focus, sorry. This is the web transceiver, which I'm kind of uh, going to do without in a couple days because I don't need it anymore. But if you get an all-star account, then you hook yourself up to this web transceiver, and you're in business, and you can talk all over the world for free, okay? So I'm not using that right now. I just have that on as a monitor so I can put the audio through another set of speakers. Okay. So all star and i'll show you what the putty in the uh the putty platform or the so-called telnet software i'll tell you about how that works in a couple days in a separate video so over here is the power supply okay i got tape over it which isn't too cool because i was worried about the wires touching because those those goofy terminals which I just touched are just cheap Chinese uh, flathead screws that screw in. So it's a Micronta 2.5 amp 12 volt regulated power supply. Here's the link radio. This is the link radio. It's a a Linko DR435 and this is the simplex frequency I have it set to. On the back of the radio, let me cast some light on here so you can see. Okay, so now you're looking at the back of the radio. This thing, okay, this thing right here is the outcoming wire from the fob, which is plugged into the D sub 9 connector. Out to the Raspberry Pi, which is this. Okay, this thing is the Raspberry Pi. Here's the cable coming to it via the USB connector. And then this is the Ethernet cable. And that's talking to the, uh, the router over here. So that's really simple. It's just these three parts, or four parts. Should I, uh, just about a walkie talkie, this link radio, the fob that plugs into the D sub 9 connector and back, which is this modified st uh, StarTech sound card, and then into the Blackberry Pi. Here's the box from the StarTech. I actually took it out of the box, as you can see here. And this is what it is, you see? basically like one of these lipstick containers with a sound card in there and it's got the two jacks in back for earphone and microphone so the modification process is the big the big work the legwork that'll keep you busy for a while if you want to modify one of these to be an actual fob for uh, to, that actually connects via this blade, this USB blade that I'm going to point to. The blade that I'm going to point to. Right there. So it gets modified and goes into the Blackberry Pi. And that's kind of your uh, the brain of your transmitter for this whole thing here. This whole ordeal. So pretty neat stuff. before when I was demonstrating I didn't uh, I didn't tell you about the uh, the software the all-star software but again I'm gonna do that in a minute again here's the link radio the coax comes out to the antenna which is this it's a it's a hustler 442 meter antenna and then out to the Raspberry Pi. Let me get it in focus. Uh, 
There's the Raspberry Pi. You can even see why they call it a, ra a Raspberry Pi. Hey, there's a Raspberry Pi right over it, right there. Check it out. There's a Raspberry Pi insignia. So let me get up to show you the software. Okay, this is the... Uh, what what you'll see in your screen, this is what you'll see in your screen if you have your BlackBerry Pi going through an HDMI cable to the back of your TV. Okay, so let me set it to the correct input, which is HDMI 2. And then let me wake it up with the mouse. Here, I'm waking up the BlackBerry Pi. And that's basically a uh, CLI or command line interface. Okay, let me just focus in. Can you see that? That's what command line interface looks like. Just a bunch of characters, nothing real significant. And I don't have the keyboard hooked up. So basically when you get to this point, you enter your username and password and then you can key in different commands and get get to different menus so I'm just learning that part of the job today I'll focus in, I'll zoom in on one thing here just so you can see that it says Arch Linux let me see if I can do that right on the top line here it says Arch Linux 3.10.10-3 Arch. Then if you didn't have to read all this crap, uh, if I didn't, if I had the keyboard hooked up, I could show you. So I'll do that in the next video. Edition of the All Star video. All Star slash Raspberry Pi video. Last night I I actually purposely left the lights down pretty much off because I noticed I had the oven on, dishwasher, dryer, a few other appliances on at the same time running here in the place. And when the transmitter keyed to feed me to feed to my walkie-talkie the audio, I noticed the lights were dimming, so I didn't want to do that. Anyhow. I disconnected. I did a whole reconfiguration here. I disconnected the power strip from the three TV components uh, in which I had the Raspberry Pi plugged into also. So now no longer. Now I have each of those three com uh, each of the components in this 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 uh, tech recreation room uh, running off different outlets. So um I also noticed, and I'll, I also noticed something, and if you, I'll throw this out as a precaution. I was recording a, some movie from NBC or Saturday Night Live, something here, I forget, last night, onto DVD. And this is back before I did the outlet replacer there, you know, the s separating the outlet outlets, they're segregating them. And I noticed that the DVD said, cannot record on this DVD. So I actually, it, and it stopped. So... While the Alinko was transmitting, it killed that DVD. And then I tried it again, and I went through three DVDs all screwed up because of that. So that's the, re the other reason I, need to, I needed to segregate the power strips. So a little story for newcomers to All-Star. That's what you got to do, I think, is just keep everything separate if you've got a room full of similar electronics, computers, and all this shit in here. So anyhow, back to the point about it. Um, so that's the setup. You know, exactly what I showed you last night. The walkie-talkie transmits to the link radio, which transmits to the fob, which goes to the Raspberry Pi and then out to the router. So your voice is being transferred into electrical signals, you know, first analog, and then, you know, out it comes out of the Alinko, and that's digital, to the Raspberry, still digital, out to the Raspberry, and all digital out to the Internet. Um... Be aware that if you're using an antenna like me, which I'll re-show you in a minute because there's just still daylight right now to show you everything else. If you're using an antenna, 
um, I would recommend not because you're rebroadcasting the signal from an already in progress conversation uh, both sides of that signal you know station A station B and that's getting rebroadcasted on your link frequency so I didn't want to do that here that means anybody driving by can hear both sides of a conversation as if this is like public service you know like ambulances talking to each other so I don't want that I'm gonna I'm gonna need to connect the back of the radio to a dummy load instead of an antenna um, and then presents the issue about well how does the radio talk to my walkie-talkie so I'm gonna need to troubleshoot that I think what the dummy load is gonna do is just make it so this room is a ho as a Wi-Fi hotspot basically for the radio to hear so uh, anyhow I knew that was gonna happen that if I had a 440 antenna right here I would hear you know a couple of miles away down the road and I did and it got out pretty good I was happy about that so but then again, I don't want to be doing that around here because then everybody knows driving by you're you're doing something with a link. So anyhow, that's the story. And let me, while there's still daylight out, let me move the camera over here. Let me pause it a minute, and then I'll show you the setup. Okay, once again, here's the setup. Link radio. Let me get it in focus again. Link radio with the actual box for the vendor, Canna Kit. That's the Raspberry Pi box. There's the cable going out of the radio. That's called a fob. And there's the Raspberry Pi. And there's the mouse that controls the Raspberry Pi. It should have a keyboard hooked hooked up to it. I don't got to go buy another keyboard. And there's the Hustler antenna. I mean the Diamond antenna. So And last but not least, the power supply. The back of the power supply, that's a Micronta 2.5 amp 12 volt regulated power supply. I gotta redo the back, I gotta drill holes in it and maybe refabricate the back so that those two chintzy uh, Those things I just pointed to, those two chintzy slotted screws can come out and I could put real bolts in the back of it so I don't touch any wires together. Also, the metal backing touches those wires, so I had to tape it up. So no good, I gotta refab I gotta refabricate that to suit my needs. I have a couple of those pyramid power supplies, you know, the 10, 12 amp surge power supply. I don't want to use them. I don't want I don't I'm not using all that power for to drive the radio. <laughs>